Champaign-Urbana, Danville, Decatur, and Springfield. This is your news leader, WCIA 3 News at 10. Pat Quinn arriving at the governor's mansion, a mansion that has sat empty for the last six years, but not tonight. Good evening, I'm Dave Benton. Welcome to this special report. And I'm Jennifer Roscoe. Governor Quinn has his work cut out for him, not only restoring people's confidence, but figuring out a way to fill the state's growing $2 billion budget shortfall. WCIA3's Blake Wood live outside the governor's mansion, where Pat Quinn spent his first night as governor. Uh, Blake, what did the governor do his first night in office? I would say maybe wipe off some dust and cobwebs, but I know his staff has been there. Well, they have been the whole time, Jennifer. The governor's been inside having dinner with family tonight, and uh, they say it's all been a good time inside. He doesn't know if he plans to sleep here tonight, but he does plan to make this his permanent home. And that's not the only thing Quinn plans to change from the Bogoyevich administration. One of his first goals is to reopen state parks and historic sites that Bogoyevich had closed. Quinn plans on running a much different type of administration, making himself accessible to the public and press, and he says he plans to focus on reform. This should be a year of governance where people really work on repairing damage and making things better. And uh, there'll be plenty of time for politics in 2010. And he also says it's time to take a serious look at the state's finances. He'll try to delay the state's budget address so he can review the damage. And Quinn has a full plate ahead of him. He has a press conference scheduled for tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the Capitol. Jennifer. All right, thank you so much, Blake. Now, Quinn was working on the state's financial crisis even before he was sworn in today. Governor Quinn's office, okay. Well, we're going to take a moment here to talk about those social services, but first we want to go back to Blake Wood live in Springfield. He now has a live interview with our new governor, Pat Quinn. Blake, go right ahead. Well, Dave, a little bit of a surprise. The governor's come out and join us here outside the uh, executive mansion. Governor, has to be, uh, you know, kind of a bittersweet day for you, I imagine. Well, it's a sad day, I think, that we had to have an impeachment, but uh, the people of Illinois prevailed. Our Constitution prevailed. I think our senators and representatives did an outstanding job. And we're going to work from the whatever it takes to make sure our state has uh, top-notch uh, ethics uh, and also make sure we work on our economy night and day to get people back to work. Day one of the Quinn administration tomorrow, what's your first priority? Well, we're going to talk about reform. I think uh, ethics reform is very, very important in light of what we've just seen. Nobody should pay a corruption tax in Illinois. Uh, we have a tough economic time, and we've got to eliminate corruption. And I know the people are behind that movement. That's what I'm committed to. You've uh, pledged to live here at the governor's mansion, made good on that promise here tonight. You staying here, or where are you going? I'm going back to work at the Capitol. i got all my papers over there. i probably stay about midnight or so, and then come back here and... Uh, sleep, and then I'll be back at the Capitol tomorrow. Uh, this is a great house. We want to make it the people's house, and I hope we can have an open house very soon for people in central Illinois and all across our state to come, and kind of thinking about Lincoln's birthday, but we'll see if we can put that together. Have you had a chance to talk to former Governor Bogoyevich since all of this happened? No. And, you know, any message for him or anything at this point? Well, he's a private citizen, and I think uh, he'll have to handle his own affairs. Uh, the people of Illinois uh, need a government that uh, really moves forward right now on our economy, on our ethics ne needs and, and, you know, improvements, and uh, that's the job we're going to get going on right away. Governor, thanks so much for joining us, and uh, good luck as you get underway okay, tomorrow. thank you. Stay thanks, warm. Governor. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Well, there you have it, Governor Pat Quinn, a little surprise appearance outside here at the Governor's Mansion tonight. We'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, Blake, thank you very much for that uh, fantastic interview with our new governor. Obviously, a lot of work for him ahead. Other work, though, for us at the moment, we want to tell you about our DTV test. We do have to do this as well by law. That's right. We've got a lot going on tonight. Okay, so here's the deal. We're going to go to it in just a second. If you continue to see us, you're good. If you lose us and you have cable or a dish, call your service provider. If you have rabbit ears and see the graphic, you lose us, call the number on your screen. And the test is going, so by by all means, hopefully you're in a good spot tonight. Let's go to Amanda Evans, live at our call center where they're ready to take your calls if you've got trouble, Amanda. 
Hey Dave, they certainly are. And you can hear it, those phones start ringing the moment we switch in there. It was kind of the same story two weeks ago when we did a very similar test. We'll go ahead and let you take a look at our panel of experts ready to take your phone calls tonight. Now, if you're seeing me, that's a good thing. Now, some of these people that are getting this phone or that are calling right now are having some issues. Maybe they're seeing some fuzz. If you have cable where they're asking you not to call because it is a cable company issue and they're hoping to have that all fixed before February 17th. And it's kind of a boom, boom, boom thing phone call after phone calls these people take some of the most common calls i don't know how to hook my cable up where do i get a coupon some of these deals and these guys are ready to take all of those questions dave Amanda, thanks very much. Of course, uh, we'll let you know when that test is over. As we mentioned earlier, Pat Quinn offering a new uh, era of cooperation, if you will, hoping to talk with some agencies that have suffered under budget cuts in recent months here in Illinois. That cooperation missing in Springfield over the past few days. Rob Blagojevich refusing to take part in his own impeachment trial until today. But in the end, senators didn't buy his view of what's happened in the last six years as he was governor. WCIA 3's Marissa Torres live outside the governor's office tonight. And Marissa... Blagojevich won't be walking through those doors again. That's right, Dave. The transition seemed almost immediate after hours of testimony on the Senate floor, and senators seemed to already know what was to come despite last-ditch efforts by Blagojevich. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here today and uh, present my uh, closing argument. After refusing to appear in front of the Senate, former Governor Blagojevich had a change of heart. I'm here to talk to you and appeal to you to your sense of fairness, your sense of responsibility, your commitment to the Constitution, your commitment to basic fairness. For almost an hour, he defended allegations against him and said he had no intentions of resigning. He even asked senators to put themselves in his position. Imagine yourself walking in my shoes. Think about you if someone said the things that they said about me and you know you didn't do it but there's been a rush to judgment. Senators called his speech compelling and spellbounding, but in the end, Blagojevich's last-ditch efforts weren't enough. One by one, senators stood up to cast away the governor. But the decision is based on first-hand experience of serving with this governor for six years and seeing how Rob Blagojevich has abused the governor's office, abused the taxpayers. He has disappointed the people of the state of Illinois Enough is enough. After the vote came down, it was time for a new governor to be sworn in. And right after the speech, the governor left the Senate floor, even though he was invited to stay. And when he got back to Chicago, he told reporters the whole process was unfair. Live at the state capitol, Marissa Torres, WCIA 3 News at 10.